Over the last several months, I've tested quite a few new solar generators that have come to the market. And in this video, I'm gonna answer the question, which one is the best? Now, the recommendation I'll provide in this video comes from a series of tests that I ran each one of these devices through to see if it really performs as a manufacturer suggests. I will tell you up front, there are definitely a few units that stand out, which I'll share at the end of the video. Also, be sure to stick around as we're gonna give away one of the solar generators, and I'll give you the details at the end of the video on how you can enroll for that. This video is gonna be long as there's a lot to cover. So I'll provide links here on the screen along with timestamps if you wanna hop around to the various sections. We're gonna start with the discussion of the important factors you need to consider before you buy one of these. And I wanted to start here as it will inform you as to what you should be looking for when you're shopping for these units. Next, we're gonna go over how I test these so you'll understand how these perform against each other using the factors from the first point. I'll then go through an overview for each model that we're gonna be testing and give my thoughts on each. We'll briefly discuss solar panel options for each company and other third-party options. I'll then walk you through a free spreadsheet that I'm gonna provide that will show the results of all my tests along with a calculator which will help you to determine which one of these devices really will be able to power your specific needs. We'll then answer the question, which one do I recommend? Now, this is the most common question I get asked. So after covering everything we will in this video, I'm gonna announce which device really stands out. Also this year, I'm gonna introduce various categories since the market has exploded, and there are a lot of options based on different needs. Again, due to the amount of content I'll be covering, if you'd like to hop around the various chapters, I'm gonna post links in the description section below, or you can move around to these timestamps shown here on the screen. Also, in a few weeks, I'll be doing a comparison video of the larger solar generators in the market that can actually be plugged into your home to power much more than these devices. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you wanna be alerted when that video comes out. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Important factors before buying. I'm gonna start here as the factors that we're about to outline here will really inform you as to what things you should be looking at before you purchase one of these devices. Now, there are seven primary factors that you should consider before you buy one of these. The first point is capacity. Now, capacity simply refers to the amount of power that one of these devices can store. Now, this unit is often listed as watt hours. And let me explain this quickly to you in very practical terms. A watt is just a unit of power. I've got a few devices here in front of me to help us understand this on practical terms. On the side of most electrical devices, if you look at them very closely, you'll often see the watts that it requires to operate this particular device. For example, this light bulb requires nine watts and it's written clearly on the side. Now this charger for my laptop pulls actually 45 watts. Again, it's written right on the side here. And this heat gun, actually pulls 1800 watts, again, written on the side, which 1800 watts is quite a lot. So let's say that I'm in an area where there's no power, or again, you know, the power just went out, and I need to power some of these devices here in front of me. Now for this example, let's just say I need to power just my laptop and a light bulb. The light bulb needs nine watts, and again, remember the laptop charger pulls 45 watts. So if we were to add nine, plus 45, we get 54. Okay, so what can I do with that number? Well, if I were to leave these devices on, my light bulb and my laptop charger for one hour, they would require 54 watt hours. See what I did there? Nine plus 45 equals 54. And powering these for one hour would require 54 watt hours. So let's apply this information to these solar generators that I've got here in front of me. Now this Jackery 1000 here has a capacity of 1000 watt hours. If we were to divide 1000, the capacity of this device's batteries by 54, the number of watts that I need to power these devices, we get 18.51. This means that we could output 54 watts continuously for about 18.51 hours. It's really that simple. Now there are a few other factors that we're gonna discuss momentarily that do impact the total output but if you get this initial concept, you're doing great. Now let's look at the second important factor. Now the next consideration is output capabilities. And we're gonna cover three aspects of output capabilities. We're gonna go over continuous, surge, and UPS, EPS. Now the continuous output value tells us the maximum number of watts that this system can provide continuously. If we were to look on the front of this, we can see that it says 1,000 watts. This is the Jackery 1,000. It can output 1,000 watts. 
That means that this device at maximum can output 1,000 watts, anything over, and it will trip off. Now, for example, if we plugged in a device that pulled 1,000 watts, something like this heating plate that I have here next to me, the solar generator could power it until the battery was completely depleted. Now, I don't recommend that you run these devices at 100% output on a continual basis, because if you do, you're eventually gonna burn up the battery. Running it at that level damages the battery over time. If you were to run your car all day at the maximum RPM, you'd burn up your motor pretty quickly. And the same principle applies to these devices. And ideally what you wanna do is run them at about 50% of what the manufacturer lists as the maximum. And again, since this device is rated for a thousand watts output, I would plan on pushing it no more than about 500 watts on a regular basis. Now regarding surge, some devices, when you start them up, they draw a lot of power. Think about things like fans, refrigerators, or saws, because all of these have a motor. When you start these devices up, what you'll see is a momentary spike to get the engine moving as far as the momentary spike in the power that's needed. And then what will happen is it will settle down to continuous watts usage that we discussed in the previous point. So why is this important to understand this value? This Jackery 1000 has a surge capacity of 2000 watts. If you were to plug in a device that has a higher surge than 2000 watts, then it's gonna cause a Jackery 1000 to just trip a circuit internally, which you can reset when you restart it. Now, the last output consideration is UPS EPS. Some of these devices can be plugged into a wall to charge them, and then you can plug in a device into these to power that device. What will happen is these solar generators are gonna power your devices, passing the power from the wall socket to your device while being charged at the same time. So if the power were to go down, some of these will continue to power your device and you won't even notice that the power went down. This is often referred to as UPS or uninterrupted power source. And to qualify to be a UPS, the switch over time has to happen in under 10 milliseconds. One millisecond is one one thousandth of a second. Now, some of these devices can still act like a UPS, but their switch over time may be slightly slower. Some of the EcoFlow models they call this EPS, or Emergency Power Source, and they can switch over in 30 milliseconds. For very sensitive devices, such as computers, they need a fast switch over time, but some devices that are not as sensitive can still operate without you even noticing them being turned off for you know, 30 milliseconds while the EPS switches over from the power source to the battery. Now, the third point that you need to consider is the charging capability for both solar and AC. And this is a very important number to consider when you go to shop for one of these devices. It really gives you an understanding of how quickly you can charge this with either solar panels or from an AC source or both. The smaller the solar charging capability or AC charging capability, the longer that it's gonna to take to charge one of these devices. So for example, some will handle only about 400 watts of solar input or maybe 300 watts of AC input, whereas others can handle 2000 watts from solar and 1800 watts from AC input. And these numbers are really important if you're in a situation where let's say maybe the power goes out and you need to charge them from a solar panel or maybe a backup generator and being able to charge them rapidly is gonna be important in that situation. Now, the fourth point is battery chemistry. You typically have two options with these models. You have lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate. Now, lithium ion batteries are lighter, but you get fewer charge cycles. What are charge cycles? Have you ever noticed that your phone battery seems to not last as long after a year or two of usage? The battery, after numerous charge cycles, you let it go down, then you charge it up, and you do this on a daily basis. After time, it loses its ability to hold as much of a charge as it did when you first bought it. Now, if I were to run this Jackery's battery from 100% fully charged down to 0% fully depleted, after 500 of these charge cycles, the battery could only hold 80% of the original capacity. So let's say one of these devices is rated for 2000 watts of capacity. After 500 cycles, it would only hold about 1600 watts, 20% less than 2000. Now also their lifespan is about two to three years before you begin to see degradation in their storage capacity. Now, lithium iron phosphate on the other hand, it's heavier but it gets many more charge cycles. It typically is rated for on average about 3,500 cycles at 80%, meaning that after 3,500 cycles from 100 to 0%, it will still hold 80% of its original capacity, which is pretty impressive. Plus they're normally rated for roughly about 10 years of usage, but the downside is their weight. 
For example, the Jackery 2000 Pro, which has a capacity of 2000 watt hours, weighs 43 pounds, and it has lithium ion batteries, whereas the Blue Eddy AC200P, which also has a capacity of 2000 watt hours, weighs 62 pounds, and it has lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, the Blue Eddy has other features which add to the overall weight, but the Blue Eddy is about 30% heavier. So, when you shop for these units, you need to determine if weight or charge cycles are more important. Now, the fifth point is the manufacturer's history and warranties. And I bring this up because the solar generator market has become flooded. I probably get three or four emails daily which, uh, you know, come from new companies asking me to review their solar generators. And I mostly have limited the options that I'm showing in this video to the ones that have sold the most and the companies that have been around the longest. I tend to stick with a handful that I trust and I can see that they have a history and are continuing to innovate new products. I've honestly lost track of how many companies come out with a new product only to pull it after finding some major flaw. And I prefer to stick with those that have a proven track record. Also, some of these have longer warranties, so you'd really need to factor that in as well as the sometimes do break or they simply stop working. Now, the sixth point is connectivity. One of the new features that many of these companies are beginning to roll out is the ability to connect to an app on your phone. Some only have Bluetooth and will allow Bluetooth, and some allow both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Some provide some very advanced functionality via the app, and some are just very basic in what you can do. There is one manufacturer in particular that gives you quite a lot of control over the device. Now, as we go through each manufacturer and their devices, I'll elaborate on the apps. And the seventh and the final point is cost. Now, the price for these can vary widely. And as the old saying goes, you get what you pay for. When I get into the specifics of performance on each of these units, typically people look at cost from the perspective of how many kilowatt hours these devices can hold their capacity. For example, you can expect to pay around a dollar per kilowatt hour of capacity. That's kind of average in the industry. And there's a lot more to this, but we're gonna cover it in the breakdown of each manufacturer. How I test these units. A quick note on testing. When I get these, I typically do a handful of tests. First, I test the DC and AC efficiency. And for DC, I plug in a device that allows me to set the DC output so that I can run the solar generator's output at 100 watts continuously. And after the battery is depleted, I can divide the total output by the total state of capacity of the battery, which gives me the DC efficiency. And to test the AC output efficiency, I run a similar test by plugging in a device that allows me to draw current at 75% of the device's output capability. Next, I test each of the device's pure sine wave capabilities at 0, 50, 75%, and 100% load on the AC inverter. I also test the sound level that it makes when charging and discharging. And I watch and record the devices that have stadium charging capabilities to determine the speed it charges based on the percentages. For example, the devices that have stadium charging, not all do, but the ones that do may charge quickly for the first 70% and then slow down in the last 30%. Now lastly, when the batteries are full, I test to see if the device can handle pass-through charging, allowing me to power other devices plugged into the AC output while the unit itself is plugged into a power source. This especially comes in handy for UPS functionality. And one test request that I received right before I was ready to launch this video was to determine if the device will charge from solar if it drains all the way down to zero. If the battery were to drain overnight and you wanted to start charging again when the sun comes up, it's important to know this as some of these actually require you to physically turn it on to accept power from the solar. Now, some do it automatically. They'll start charging from the panels the moment the sun hits them, even though it's not turned on. And I'll update the spreadsheet shortly after launching this video to include this information. Details of each major brand. Now, in this section of the video, I'm gonna give you an overview and the highlights of each of the products that I tested. This year, several of the manufacturers, they sent me all of their products. So in order to keep this video from going too long, I'm gonna give summaries of each of the brands and direct you to the spreadsheet that I created, which has a much more in-depth breakdown on how each performed after running them through various tests. I'll mention anything that either stands out or I didn't like as we go through each model. Now, at the end of the video, I'll give you a summary of which ones really stood out. We're gonna run through each of the brands by alphabetical order, starting with Anchor. Anchor sent me their new 767 model. Let's run through the specs first. The capacity is 2,048 watt hours. The AC output is 2,400 watts. The AC charging is a stadium charging of 1,450 to 1,050. The solar input is 1,000 watts. Total expansion, you can go up to 4.1 kilowatt hours. 
AC efficiency is 83%, DC efficiency is 87%, pretty nice. And the price is $1,999. So this is the first time I've ever tested an Anchor product. And I have to say, this model thoroughly impressed me. It checks a lot of boxes. After testing, the AC efficiency was solid and the DC efficiency was one of the highest of the models that we tested. It has lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, which gives it higher charge cycles and lifespan. Additionally, the AC output is extremely capable, being able to output a whopping 2,400 watts. And it actually has a 30 amp RV hookup on the front as well, which is very rare for units of this size. It can be expanded up to 4,100 watt hours with their add-on battery. It has a handle that you can use to pull and wheels on the back to make it easy to transport. It can serve as a UPS and it can handle 1,000 watts of solar, which is a pretty solid number. There's definitely attention to detail as the build quality feels on point. Now the phone app is easy to use, which gives you the ability to change the rate at which you can charge it, which is very useful if you're charging from something like a small generator and you need to reduce the charging speed or you have a wall socket, which will allow you to charge it faster. Now I feel like this is a smaller version and more affordable version of the EcoFlow Delta Pro, which is one of my favorite solar generators. If there was just one thing I would want to improve on this unit, it would be for the ability to connect it to Wi-Fi, which would allow you to control it remotely. But otherwise, this model really stood out amongst the group. Blue Eddy. For the Blue Eddy AC200 Max, let's run through the specs. The capacity is 2,048 watt hours. The AC output is 2,200 watts. The AC charging is 449 watts. Solar input, 900 watts. Total expansion, you can go up to 8.2 kilowatt hours. The AC efficiency is 82%. The DC efficiency is 82%. The price comes in at $1,699. Now, last year, I crowned this as the winner of the 2022 solar generator comparison video. And honestly, it still holds up pretty well after a year. The AC and DC efficiencies are strong. The price is very competitive for a model with this capability, and it can be expanded up to 8,200 watt hours with additional batteries. But when compared with newer models, the only thing that I would really say that shows its age is the AC charging speed. It can only charge at 450 watts, which is about a fourth of some of the newer options on the market. And it has that big clunky charging brick, which most have moved away from. If there was a disaster and you're relying upon this for your backup power source that you could periodically recharge from something like, let's say a gas generator, or maybe the power comes on every now and then, the slow charging AC speed could really be a hindrance. But beyond this limitation, I would say that it still holds up very well. Let's look next at the AC200P. Here's the specs. It has a capacity of 2000 watt hours. It has an AC output of 2000 watts, AC charging at 466 watts, solar input at 700 watts, AC efficiency at 82%, DC efficiency at 75%. And the price comes in at $1,399. Now the AC200P is the leaner, simpler, and more affordable version of its bigger brother, the AC200 Max. They're both very similar with the main difference of this unit not being expandable. And like its brother, it too feels a little on the older side with slow AC charging speeds compared to the new options on the market. But overall, it's still a very solid option with a reputable brand name at a competitive price point. Dapson. Now the Dapson DBS 2300 is a newcomer to the space. So let's start with the specs. The capacity is 2,330 watt hours. AC output is 2,200 watts. The AC charging is 1,800 watts. Solar input 600 watts. In the total expansion, you can go up to 16.6 kilowatt hours. The AC efficiency is at 84% and the DC efficiency at 73%. The price is $1,799. Now, although this brand is new, I decided to include it in the review as it does have some unique elements. It's expandable. It has a very large capacity for the price point. It has solid AC output and AC charging speeds, and it has variable AC charging speeds via their app. Now, their lithium iron phosphate battery, according to their website, is an EV class semi-solid battery. For what you get, the price point is competitive. The only thing preventing me from giving it a full-throated endorsement is the fact that it's a new company. When shopping these devices, I do like to see a long history as there's a lot of fly-by-night companies that pop up and then disappear. Now in their defense, they did recently raise a large amount of cash to start their company, so it's a good start. But if they can keep producing products with these specs at these price points, I think they're gonna be a big contender in the space. I think they're definitely a company that I would encourage you to keep your eye on. EcoFlow. EcoFlow sent me quite a lot of units for this video. Now, instead of running through the specs on each one, let me break this section on their products into two parts. The first is their new River 2 series. 
These are smaller, under 1000 watt hour capacity systems that would be great for camping or needing to charge smaller devices such as maybe a phone, a laptop, or other portable electronics. They charge extremely fast for their size. They're very lightweight and portable, and they can be easily controlled and monitored via Bluetooth or remotely via Wi-Fi. And they use lithium iron phosphate battery technology, which has a long lifespan and can handle high charge cycles. Plus, they can handle EPS, or as EcoFlow calls it, emergency power supply, which can switch over in less than 30 milliseconds if you're using these for a pass-through backup power source for critical things such as medical devices. Now, the next up is our Delta series. These are the next step up, which are very capable devices. Shown here is their Delta Max and Delta 2. They have a Delta Mini, which I've reviewed before as well, and their Delta Pro, which is really too big to put on my desk. And I have all their specs and test results and spreadsheets. And each of these models has some really unique characteristics, including expandability options. Some even connect to their EcoFlow dual fuel generator, which can monitor the battery status and kick on if the batteries are getting too low. Now, overall, here's my take on EcoFlow's products. At the moment, they're leading the market in innovation and building a strong brand. EcoFlow products are basically tanks. They're durable, they're solidly built. And after testing so many products over the years, I can see how they've established themselves as a reputable brand. Now, when new solar generators come to market, I can even see elements that EcoFlow originally introduced in their original design being implemented in new products from other companies. Additionally, I have to come to appreciate their app, which has been refined and allows you to easily control these devices remotely if there's a Wi-Fi connection next to the device. Now, out of all the brands that I've tested, EcoFlow is the one brand that really stands out amongst the competition. GrowWatt. GrowWatt sent me two units, the 550 and the 1500. Let's start with the 550. Here are the specs of this unit. The capacity is 538 watt hours, the AC output is 430 watts, the AC charging is 500 watts, solar input 240 watts, AC efficiency 80%, DC efficiency 81%, and the price comes in at $459. Now this unit uses lithium iron phosphate batteries. It has a smart app that's controllable via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but it's bigger brother, the GrowWatt 1500, it has the following specs. The capacity is 1,512 watt hours, AC output is 2,000 watts, AC charging is 1,450 watts, solar input is 800 watts, AC efficiency is 75%, DC efficiency is 64%, and the price comes in at $1,559. Now this 1500 unit can be controlled and monitored via an app, and it does use lithium ion battery chemistry. And for this size, the capacity, AC output, and AC charging, these are all solid numbers. GrowWatt, they're an established company that's known for their inverters, and these units really represent their introduction to the portable solar generator market. I am excited to see what they roll out next. Energy. Energy has three primary units, the Flex Tactical, the Flex 1500, and the Kodiak X2. Let's look at the specs of the Kodiak X2 first. The capacity is 1280 watts, AC output 1200 watts, AC charging comes in at 1000 watts, solar input 450 watts, AC efficiency 80%, DC efficiency 82%, and the price comes in at $1,299. Now some of the unique features this unit has is the dual link technology. You can link two of these to output 2400 watts and double your capacity to 2560 watt hours. And additionally, the unit has a UPS functionality, which allows it to switch over in under 10 milliseconds if you're powering devices through this plug into a wall socket. Now, the next up from Energy is their Flex Tactical. This one is admittedly pretty fascinating. By the way, I reviewed their Flex 1500 in the past, but I'm gonna lump these together as they're similar, except the Flex Tactical has some massive upgrades. So the AC and solar charging are definitely on the low side, but this unit really answers a question I get asked all the time, what unit do you recommend for EMP situations? Well, this unit was designed to meet military requirements for portable power devices. And one of the features they added was a grounding connection on the side. And at the time of recording this video, they're the only manufacturer that EMP Shield works with and has done the R&D for both the EMP Shield connection to solar panels and the AC plugins. So they get you covered for EMPs. Now, if customer support is important to you, Energy Tech is one of the few solar generator companies that are still based in the United States. Jackery. For Jackery, I have their new Pro lineup, including their new 3000 Pro model that they're about to roll out. So let's start with their 1000 Pro model. The capacity is 1,002 watt hours, AC output is 1,000 watts, solar input is 800 watts, AC efficiency is 82%, DC efficiency 83%, and the price is $1,099. 
Now, overall, I do like their new Pro lineup compared to their original base models. They've doubled their solar input capabilities and they've increased the AC charging capabilities. The only drawback from this and other Jackery devices is their proprietary eight millimeter solar input connections. But there are adapters that you can buy to allow you to plug in the solar panels of your choosing. Next up is their 2000 Pro model. Here's the specs on that. The capacity is 2,160 watt hours, AC output 1,800 watts, solar input 1,200 watts, AC efficiency 91% and DC efficiency at 84% and the price coming in at $2,099. Now I reviewed this model last year and I actually keep this unit with my emergency bug out bag gear. One of my favorite aspects is the fact that it can charge quickly from solar with a formidable 1,200 watts of solar input. The AC is high and the DC efficiency is solid. Now next up is our 3000 Pro model. Here are the specs on this one. The capacity comes in at 3024 watt hours, AC output at 2200 watts, solar input at 1200 watts, AC efficiency at 82% and DC efficiency at 78%. And the price comes in at $2,519. Now this unit really represents Jackery's movement into the larger solar generator market. And it also includes a 30 amp RV plug-in on the front. It also has a retractable handle and wheels allowing you to easily transport it. This is Jackery's first model, which can connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth with app connectivity. Jackery does still use traditional lithium ion batteries, not the new lithium iron phosphate batteries that most manufacturers are now switching over to. Now, this does help reduce the overall weight. And since they target the outdoor community, it does make sense that they've stuck with this battery technology. Jackery is really a what you see is what you get kind of company. Their products are pretty simple and functional. They're one of the reputable brands most people are familiar with. Monotech. Now the Monotech 1000 is kind of a fascinating unit. So let's cover the specs first. It has an AC output of 1000 watts, AC charging at 210 watts, solar input at 400 watts, AC efficiency at 85% and DC efficiency at 75%. And the price comes in at $899. Now the numbers are pretty standard for a unit this size. The AC input, it's a little bit on the low side, but it's a slightly older model. The unique feature about this is that it is water resistant. So if you're an avid outdoorsman, this might be appealing to you. It's basic in that it has no app connectivity, but I think the intended target is for the outdoor usage. Overall, I was impressed with this unit and with the 400 watt solar panel that they sent me, I could definitely see a use case for this in the outdoors. Pecron. So Pecron sent me their entire lineup for this video and I've covered several of their products on my channel in the past and instead of running you through the specs of each model, I'm gonna instead refer you to the spreadsheet which breaks down these in more detail. Here's what I will say about their product lineup. Pecron has essentially studied the market and they've emulated other successful solar generators. For example, their Pecron 2000 LFP is pretty much the same as a Blue Eddy AC200 Max in its capabilities and expandability, but Pecron is clearly the budget option in this market. Their products compared to similarly capable products is substantially lower. For example, their E2000 LFP is under $1,200, whereas the aforementioned Blue Eddy AC200 Max is $1,700. They have their Pecron 1000 Pro, which is comparable to the Jackery 1000 Pro, but about half the price. They have the Pecron 600 LFP, which is similar to the EcoFlow River 2 Max or the GrowWatt 550, but it's cheaper. What you will immediately notice about the Pecron products, like the Jackery lineup, is their simplicity. What you see is what you get. There's no app connectivity. There's no settings that you can adjust. Additionally, you're not gonna see any quick charging like other models such as EcoFlow, but instead they provide you with an external brick for charging. I guess the best way to summarize Pecron is that they're very basic at a low price, but if you don't care about the bells and whistles, this might be the option for you. Point Zero Energy. Next up is a Point Zero Titan. Let's start with the specs. The capacity comes in at 2,000 watt hours, the AC output at 3,000 watts, AC charging at 573 watts, solar input at 2,000 watts, AC efficiency at 78%, DC efficiency at 91%, and the price comes in at 2,716. Now the Titan is definitely a bit of a beast. It has a whopping AC output of 3,000 watts and a solar input capability of 2,000 watts. Both of these were the highest numbers of any of the units that we tested in this portable size range. Plus, it has a 30 amp plug-in, which could allow you to output a substantial amount of power. Now, the AC charging, on the other hand, was a bit low for a unit this size at 573 watts. But if you do buy a second charger, you can get that charging speed up to 1,450 watts if you have a second battery. 
Now, due to its sheer size, it's not exactly the easiest to carry around. And I can envision this one being useful for someone who needs a permanent unit set up, such as maybe at a cabin. The battery technology is lithium ion and there's no app connectivity. Overall, I think if you're looking for a lot of power and expandability, this might be the right unit for you. Zendor. Finally, we'll mention the Zendor Superbase 2000. Let's look at the specs. The capacity comes in 2,096 watt hour, the AC output at 2,000 watts, the AC charging at 1,800 watts, solar input at 1,800 watts, AC efficiency 83% and DC efficiency at 81%. The price is $1,599. Now Zendor is another one of the new companies that have cropped up recently. And this model definitely has some unique features, including the rapid AC charging. Now the solar on this also set some records for devices small coming in at 1800 watts, just 200 watts under the 0, 0.0 Titan. That's very impressive. Now out of all the units that we tested, this is the only one that has 4G built in. This allows you to communicate with the device no matter where it is, plus it has GPS tracking so you can always see where it is. At the price point, this unit is incredibly capable for something so small. Now again, it's a bit tough for me to go all in on this one as it's a relatively new and I've never really heard of the company until recently, but based on what it can do, I am very impressed. I've also got Zendor's new Superbase V, which I'm gonna be doing a review on shortly. Now in short, Zendor is doing some really cutting edge stuff. Solar panel options. When it comes to solar panels, are you limited to the solar panels that the manufacturer recommends? The manufacturer will list information on the website explaining the watts, the amps, and the volt ranges when connecting your device to solar panels. Always be careful to observe the manufacturer's recommended values to prevent overloading the device and potentially voiding the warranty. Now, typically they'll list the recommended solar panels that you can purchase with the unit that works within the range that they set. Now, normally these come at a premium price point though. There are lower price options on the market, such as rigid solar panels that are often used for permanent exterior mounting, but they're not really ideal for mobility. These solar panels may be either too heavy or too bulky to transport if there's a disaster forcing you to evacuate. Now, in that case, you may wanna purchase the manufacturer's panels as they're often easily portable. For maximum mobility though, I do recommend one vendor that I've showcased on the channel. They do sell solar blankets, which can literally be rolled up and easily deployed. They're light enough and small enough to be easily stored if you're forced to evacuate. Now, these do have higher voltage, so they do produce a considerable amount more than most solar panels on the market, decreasing your time to charge, plus they do better in low light conditions. They're designed to rival the Powerfilm product line, which are double the price on average for comparable wattage as shown with these. Now again, they do come at a much higher price point than standard solar panels, but like all things, you pay for a better product. Shown here is our new 220 watt solar blanket. These work with a number of the solar generators we've shown in the video. I'll post a link to these solar blankets below, and in the spreadsheet, we'll document how many can be used with each solar generator if you'd like to pair them with a unit that you're looking at. Buyer's Guide Spreadsheet. In this section, I'm just gonna mention a spreadsheet that I've created so you can quickly compare the brands, see all the information for each manufacturer, and I've also included a calculator that will allow you to determine which of these devices will power your specific needs. Now, due to the fact that this video is already running so long, I decided to create a separate, dedicated video detailing everything you need to know about the spreadsheet. And I'm gonna post a link to the detailed video breaking down the spreadsheet at the top of that spreadsheet. You'll see at the top of the corner in red, the text start here. Just click on that link and it's gonna go into a video with a lot more detail explaining everything you need to know about comparing the products against each other using the calculator and studying each product more in depth. Which would I recommend? All right, so after having covered everything that we did in this video, which of these units would I recommend? The answer is, it depends. A lot of it comes down to your specific needs and the spreadsheet that we just went over really details the main items that are important that you should consider. Now, as the market has grown, these products are increasingly becoming really niche. Again, if you go to the spreadsheet, you can easily sort by solar input, price, DC or AC efficiency, AC input, and on and on. Now, having said that, here's how I view these devices. If you want a budget option, Pecron is probably the brand that you wanna check out. The brand that stands out to me the most in regards to innovation and constantly rolling out newer and better products is EcoFlow. I think buying from a brand that's got a history and is clearly moving forward is a smart consideration. But if you had to pin me down to just one solar generator out of all the ones that we reviewed, 
I think the Anchor 767 is the one that really stands out to me. It definitely checks a lot of boxes. It's expandable. It uses lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry. It can output a whopping 2,400 watts of AC. It's manufactured by a company that's very well known. It can handle a decent 1,000 watts of solar. Now, if it had Wi-Fi connectivity, that would really elevate it to near perfection to allow for remote connectivity. But if you're watching this anchor, please consider adding that in in newer versions that you roll out, please. I will say a solid second place goes to the Zendor Superbase 2000. For what it can do at the price point, Zendor is definitely innovating some powerful products. What do you think? Out of all the products we covered, which one is your favorite? Solar Generator Giveaway. All right, for the Solar Generator Giveaway, here's what we're gonna be doing. I'll ship this EcoFlow Delta II along with a backup battery to the winner of our contest giveaway. To enroll in the contest, just simply go to cityprepping.com forward slash solar generator. There you can sign up for our newsletter to get the spreadsheet, plus you'll be automatically enrolled for our giveaway. In exactly one month of releasing this video, we're gonna be sending out an email to the winner, so definitely check your inbox then. Hopefully this video provides you enough information to help you in your decision-making process. I would encourage you to watch the video after this one detailing how to determine your power needs if the grid were to go down, which covers the subject in a lot more detail to ensure that you really have a strong understanding, which reinforces what we covered here in more detail. I'll post a link up in the cards above to that. Now, if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to post that below. And as always, stay safe out there.